Storyteller's Logbook, Episode 1 Champagne, Urbana's Hampton Inn, Illinois Airport After a few miles, I thought the silence should be broken. After all, he had greeted me pleasantly enough, and had even suggested I finish my cereal when he arrived a few minutes early into the foyer where breakfast was available. He stood somewhat sheepishly, arms folded across his substantial middle as I gathered my things together. Tall, about fifty I'd guess, with close-cropped greying hair and the pinkish, jowly look around his face and neck of a large man carrying some pounds. As I slipped into the back seat, he seemed to settle uncomfortably into his seat. This is a nice car, I said. Is it an element? No, he said. This here's a Ford Scion. I should have known it would be unlikely to have a foreign car here in a Midwest taxi service. No rain today, I offered, as we drove along in the dark. Only the glow of the neon signs along the strip malls to our right flickered by, illuminating the road. To the left, endless fields of harvested corn stalks lined the roadway, lit by the occasional street lamp 30 feet above. Yep, no rain today. It always rains this time of the year to get us all ready for what's to come. Where y'all from, he drawled, eyes forward into the morning. The left side of his body slumped slightly against the door, giving him a relaxed and sleepy posture. At the same time, the large mitt of his hand held the wheel authoritatively. Seattle. Seattle, huh? You'll get a lot of rain out there, don't Charl? Yep, we get some rain. We don't anything near the snow you all get, though, I replied. I got me a friend out there in Seattle, he said. He says there's lots of wind out there with y'all. I was guessing it blows all that weather around. That's true, I replied, speaking up as he accelerated around a curve. A large Walmart sign loomed above us, staked high over the road, directing people to the building itself, large and long farther back from the highway. I hears you'll get some smog that sits around. Is that true? I be thinking it all blows out of there on account of de wind, but I guess not. It must be a wild and windy place out there in Seattle, he said shaking his head slightly. Oh, it can be windy. It's not so windy as all that, though, I said. It appeared he hadn't heard me as he continued. A wild place, for sure. I don't know how all them peoples got all the way out there in the first place. They must have been crazy, for sure. And their women dropping like flies in them goofy long skirts and all. Just crazy dragon women and children out there. No wonder they all went nuts and took up with Injun women and all. They needed someone to care for any kids that was left after killing off their own poor women. I mean, bugs and mountains and rain and wild winds blowing around, muscling up their hair and freezing their legs and feet. It's just ridiculous. At least them Injun women had enough sense and skills to skin themselves a deer and put them leather breeches on to be able to haul themselves up over their mountains and all. Of Course, none of them white men would be letting their women be skinning things. They'd be thinking that was fur savages even if them savages been surviving in the wilderness for hundreds of years, even if they knew how, at least not at first they wouldn't of. They would have liked them Injun women looking after them, though. Now, that's what you call hypocrisy, them stupid guys and questing after gold and riches, many of them's, what I read. Maybe after their gals was dying, they might start thinking about helping them stay warm at least with them right wicked winds going on. He shook his head disgusted at his westward-bound observations. Didn't they think these here states were good enough? They had to go off looking for something better? What kind of person does that? Why, that's a crazy person for sure, he continued, indefatigable. A large guffaw left him as he seemed to pause, considering what he said. Sheesh, maybe they got less crazy and humbled by nature and all by the time they got there, but then they was too proud to go back. Humiliated? is what they would have been coming back and telling anyone what kind of nonsense they'd been up to. That's for sure. Of course they couldn't be saying they killed off their daughters, neither could they. At least not right off the bat, that is. There was enough light in the car to see his taxi certificate on the passenger side flap, so I leaned forward for a closer look. Thomas J. Williams, it said. Where are you from? Do you mind me asking? I said. You have quite a distinctive accent. Well, it's for sure not from where you're from. Not with all your fancy talk, he laughed. I was from Cairo, Illinois. Without missing a beat, Thomas J. Williams continued. <laughs>